stage prior to what they call the advent of the cafeteria diet, meaning researchers would literally pump calories into the stomachs of animals and they wouldn't gain weight because the animals would just mm. stop eating. Wow. So, but when they started to introduce animals to non-food, aka processed starches and sweets or what we eat today, the animals effortlessly gained and maintained an elevated set point weight, what I refer to in my research. So there is absolutely an automatic shutoff. This automatic shutoff can be deranged though by stress caused by non-food as well as other sources of stress such as just natural your boss is being a jerk or you're not getting enough sleep, things like that. Mm. Now, when you say shut-off point, you're talking about the satiety, the satisfaction center, correct? That's exactly right. We've all experienced this, right? If you eat nutrient-dense proteins and vegetables, you can get full quite easily, whereas if you eat, for example, a potato chip that markets itself as saying once you pop, you can't stop, the more of them they eat, you could eat 600 calories without feeling satisfied at all. If it's empty, in other words, if it doesn't have the density, the nutritional density. Not only that, but if it also has appetite-stimulating things, uh -huh. such as what we've seen in starch and sugar, which actually stimulate your appetite, or with high fructose corn syrup, that actually mm. alters your baseline levels of hormones and makes you eat more calories long-term. Do, do you think there's a nefarious conspiratorial aspect to this food processing idea? I think it is incredibly similar to tobacco. And, in fact, it is owned. Kraft, for example, is owned yeah. by Philip Morris. Many of How our ironic. food, quote, unquote, food companies are owned. And it's the same type of thing. There are proven addictive characteristics of certain foods. And it does not make sense for me as a food manufacturer from a profit perspective, forget about morality for a second, to sell you something that doesn't make me money and keeps mm. you healthy and satisfied because it eliminates my market. Have you heard of the Minnell Institute in Philadelphia, in Pennsylvania? I a place where, what they this, this is a place where they study. They got PA, it's all funded by pharma, uh, by drug companies and food companies, and uh, they got all these PhDs, brilliant minds, figuring out the act, the actual nature of uh, the molecular nature behind the molecular uh, aspect behind eating behaviors and how to exploit that molecular aspect by putting specific chemicals in food. A place called the Minnell Institute, and there is a, uh, there's a book called Taste, uh, just called Taste, where the, the gal talks about this place, and that's why I asked you about do you, if you think this is done in intentionally uh, in terms of uh, in terms of kind of a con in a conspiratorial sort of fashion but you're saying it's more like an economic interest more like capitalistic interests as i understand is that correct yeah, I do not think there is a, the CEO of a food company is sitting there pursing his fingers together, wondering how he can cause more people to become bi diabetic. Diabetic is just a consequence of him making his food products as delicious as possible and as uh, appetite stimulating as possible. So, you know, are, are cigarette manufacturers evil or are they something else uh, let's call it something else <laughs> how about a cross that, between but... how about a cross between that's where i want to leave go. There you go. <laughs> there's a book called gulp have you i don't know if you heard of this book called gulp and it's uh, a gal talks about all the different aspects of food manufacturing and and, and manipulating food for for uh, sale uh, and for capitalistic and economic and mercenary interests and she talks about dog food and how she says how they uh they uh, know a dog food is good if a dog will eat eat enough of it to throw up and if the dog vomits then they knew that the dog food was good and sometimes i think that that somehow relates to how we decide how manufacturers decide whether a, a food for human consumption is a good food whether people will eat so much of it that they feel like throwing up and if they don't then probably that's not a food that's going to be economically viable but in any case isn't that kind of interesting they the dog has to throw up for the dog food to be a good quality dog for a, a, a good product all right. Well, and, See, and the, the one reason, just real quick, where I, I hedge my bets and don't call these people evil is if we believe these calorie myths that we've been fed, it's very easy for them to sleep at night thinking that if people just eat 1,600 calories, regardless of what it's from, that they'll be healthy and fit because that is what we've been told. Mm -hmm. So until we can educate them, I believe they have a little bit of moral defense. Well, there's actually something called a Twinkie guy. There was a food professor. I forgot where he was from, and he, he proved that you could lose weight by just eating Twinkie. Twinkies. Based Absolutely. on this idea. And there's, there's an amputation diet as well, which proves that you can lose weight by cutting off your right leg. Yeah. But I wouldn't recommend it either. <laughs> or by cutting off your head. That's also a good way to lose weight, apparently. <laughs> All right. So tell us about SANE, this whole aspect. I love your little acronym, SANE, and how it relates to the, the whole calorie myth, the calorie is a calorie is a calorie. The second of the three calorie myths I explore in the book is that 
a myth that the calorie is a calorie, which is like saying that water is water. So see that mud puddle over there in the gutter on right. the street? Just go drink that. It's fine. Right. So if you actually look at the research, there's four factors that prove, prove clinically that a calorie is not a calorie, and they're abbreviated using the acronym STAIN. Stands for, STAIN stands for satiety, or how quickly calories fill you up, how long they keep you full. Aggression, the hormonal and blood sugar impact of calories. Nutrition, how many essential vitamins, minerals, amino acids, and fatty acids come along with the calorie. And then efficiency, or how easily our body can store those calories as fat. And those are all the factors that have to do with how, how quickly uh, or how effectively a calorie will make you gain weight. Is that correct? How, uh, or, or lose weight. There are, or, uh, calories right. are just nutrition is information. So there's literally studies showing that you can actually eat a diet consisting of more calories, but depending on their source, you will lose more weight than a diet with fewer calories. All right, talk, talk to us about protein. There's all this mythology out there about protein as well. As, in fact, I would say there's just as much mythology about protein as there is about calories and misunderstandings as well. The way I look at it, though, cal- uh, uh, protein intake is one of the best ways to lose weight and one of the, one of the most nutritionally dense forms of, of caloric intake, at least in terms of, of biological value. What's your take on protein? You're exactly right. The three things that consistently differentiate sane calories in food, what we want to eat more of from insane edible products are water, fiber, and protein. So protein, fiber, and water-rich foods are across the board better for us than dry, low-fiber, low-protein foods. And you're exactly right. There's a huge amount of mythology around protein. So just to get the facts straight, protein doesn't cause cancer. Protein is healthy long-term. Protein doesn't cause cardiovascular disease. Protein does help burn body fat, and we can provide studies supporting every single one of those statements. Now, how, you got to distinguish proteins, though, correct? There's, there's protein and there's protein. They're not all the same, just like they're, not all calories are the same. Tell us how you would distinguish the various types of protein. You're exactly right. There's high and low quality everything. So it's not that carbs, protein, or fat are good or bad. We have to say, what are the high quality staying sources? So when it comes to protein, we want to get protein that is complete and very biologically available for our body. And again, doesn't have a bunch of garbage coming along with it. And these are going to be things found from humanely raised animals. So you don't want to eat sick animals. That would make you sick. As well as from wild caught seafood that is low in things like mercury and, and items like that. A lot of what we hear about is being a good source of protein, such as a bean or a nut, it is not at all a good source of protein. It doesn't mean it's bad for you. It's just mostly carbohydrate or fat. I want to, we got to take a break, Jonathan, but I want to explore that idea of bean and nut protein because i got a lot of vegans out in the audience who, who really do focus on that type of protein. We're talking to Jonathan Baylor, author of The Calorie Myth. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back right after this. Did you know that organic sulfur can cleanse and defend your body against the poisons we're exposed to each day? Organic sulfur crystals from sulfurdefense.com help by forcing oxygen and nutrition into your cells while eliminating heavy metals, contaminants, and damaging radiation. Defend yourself and family from toxic assault with one of the most critical and essential minerals available today. Order online at sulfurdefense.com. That's sulfurdefense.com. Or call 800-593-6273. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. If you'd like to listen to GCN programs on the go, I have great news. GCN has created a Droid and iPhone application, and it's free. Just as easy as going to GCNlive.com, click on the banner, and download. Before you know it, you'll be listening to your favorite hard-hitting GCN shows, live or on demand, right on your Droid or iPhone, 24-7 and on the go. So download the Droid and iPhone app free by clicking on the banner at GCNlive.com. Thanks again for listening to GCNlive.com. Again, that's GCNlive.com. One in every 50 homes will have a break-in this year. Burglars call it smash and grab. Police call it robbery. We call it avoidable. We are Fake TV, a simple electronic device that can fool even professional burglars. Fake TV easily plugs into any outlet and simulates the changing colors of a television. To a burglar, it looks like someone must be home watching TV, so they'll likely move on to an easier target. At only $29.95, Fake TV costs less than a month of most alarm monitoring plans and comes with free shipping. Order your Fake TV by calling 877-5-FAKE-TV or go to faketv.com. 
That's 877-532-5388 or faketv.com. Fake TV, the burglar deterrent. We live in a complicated society. Stressful issues are always popping up. Have you ever been treated unfairly by someone? Have you ever been overcharged for a repair? Have you ever signed a contract or a document worried about identity theft? How many times have you been in those unique situations where you just wanted to call an attorney to find out if you're right or wrong or what your legal rights are? But every time you think about calling an attorney, what do you think about first? That's right. Who do you call and how much will it cost? Our friends at Legal Shield have found a solution. With a nationwide network of 6,900 attorneys who average 19 years of experience, Legal Shield's law firms take over 40,000 calls per week helping their members. For less than $20 per month, you can have access to Legal Shield on everything from the trivial to the traumatic. Let Legal Shield stand up for your rights at lsprotection.com. That's lsprotection.com. Or call 855-340-SAVE. 855-340-7283. This alert just came in. This special announcement is for business owners and leaders of organizations who've been waiting for the right time to build. General Steel has made it impossible to wait any longer with rock-bottom prices that could save you thousands. That's right. General Steel, America's leader in pre-engineered structures, is offering buildings at prices you will never see again. Don't miss these prices. A 50 by 100 for under $30,000. You heard right. That's 5,000 square feet under $30,000. Manufacturers, if you need a larger building, try a 100 by 100 commercial building for 129000 You can't afford to rent with these prices. Imagine a 70 by 100 foot church building for under $69,000. With the economy improving and interest rates still at historic lows, you can't afford to wait. So call 866-91-STEEL. Lock in your price now. Take delivery in spring. 866-91-STEEL. That's 866-917-8335. Great news, pure water lovers. BigBerkeyWaterFilters.com has a special discount offer for all GCN listeners. You can't do better than a Big Berkey for economy. For only 1.7 cents a gallon, a single set of filters can last for 5 to 10 years. There's none better than a Big Berkey for emergency preparedness as a backup water source. And you just can't beat a Big Berkey to remove dangerous chlorine, all types of fluoride, pathogenic bacteria, cysts, parasites, and unhealthy viruses products from municipal water. Berkey water filter systems are even powerful enough to purify stagnant pond water. For the gold standard in water filters, get a Big Berkey at BigBerkeyWaterFilters.com. And all GCN listeners get 5% off all ceramic filter systems. For details, call 1-877-99-BERKEY. That's 877-99-BERKEY. Big Berkey water filters for the love of clean water. The nation's largest independently owned and operated talk radio network. The Genesis Communications Network. GCN. All right, welcome back to The Bright Side. I am Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for being here. We're here Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on our archive page at brightsideben.com. We're talking to Jonathan Baylor, author of The Calorie Myth as well as The Smarter Science of Slim. Welcome back, Jonathan. Before we went to break, you were uh, talking about beans and legumes. We've got a lot of vegetarians who listen to this program. What's your take on vegetarian protein and the bean and legume thing? And uh, I know you said it had a lot of carbohydrates, but aren't there a lot of anti-nutrients in legumes and beans as well? There are, there are, and even popping up to a much more mainstream, self-evident level, if we're going to call something a good source of protein, let's agree on what good source of protein means. So I would say there's two things. One is it's a complete protein, meaning it gives us everything that is beneficial about protein. And the second thing is that it has more protein in it than anything else. For mm. example, if if a kidney bean has 35% protein in it and 51% carbohydrate, if it's a good source of protein, then is it a very, very, very good source of carbohydrate? Because it has more carbohydrate than it has protein. Whereas if you look at like a tuna fish, for example, it's 94% protein. That mm. seems like a good source of protein to me. Do you think it's a lot harder for a vegetarian or a vegan to lose weight than it would be for, uh, uh, for or is it easier for them to gain weight than it is for a, a carnivore? I think it depends on where they're getting their calories. A carnivore who's eating hot 
dogs and spam, he's not going to have a very easy time losing weight versus a vegetarian who was getting most of their calories from healthy fats versus maybe a vegetarian 